HBC Digest, uh, welcome back to another conversation with distinguished leaders of historically black colleges and universities. Today, our distinguished guests are from the great Payne College uh, with several monumental announcements uh, over the last month or so uh, to, to speak to their efforts on fundraising and accreditation and partnerships with, with major, major corporations in the area. Uh, today's guests are Payne College uh, chairperson Michael Thurman, Payne's College President Cheryl Evans Jones, and Provost Curtis Martin. So, uh, good morning to one and all, uh, lady and gentlemen. Uh, I appreciate the time you've made today. Uh, the big news, obviously, uh, is 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 Payne uh, establishing accreditation with uh, tracks, and that that that's major major news for the institution. Obviously, major uh, news for that community as well. Madam President, I would start with you. Um, there aren't many colleges that are, that are, you know, able to say, you know, we were able to successfully negotiate, apply for, and gain accreditation, um, even after even after ending a relationship with another another association. Can you talk about the work that you and your team put in to make that possible, and how the pain community really contributed to to the great success of getting aligned with tracks? Yes, and first of all, let me thank you for having us as a part of the program today. We are, as you said, accredited by the Transnational Association of Christian Colleges and Schools, TRACS, as it's known by the acronym. And the accreditation culminated after several months of very intense work. We use the expression that the accreditors look at everything from the president to the parking lot. And so there's a set of standards that's pretty standard, if I may say, across the accrediting bodies. And they look at things like governance, operational authority, academic programs, facilities, finances, everything, you name it. And so we had a team that led the effort, but certainly faculty, staff, and students all played a role in making sure that we could successfully address the standards of tracks. And then Dr. Uh, or Chairman Thurman, I should say, from a board perspective, um, you guys were centrally involved in heavy voices in the effort to get that done. What is it like from a board position uh, in the application process and updating the community on information about that process and, and maintaining confidence from the community, from the business community, from alumni and students. Can you speak to how how difficult or how easy that was and how it assisted in that effort to, to, to gain accreditation with tracks? Well, first of all, thank you for this opportunity and thank you for the outstanding work that you do on behalf of historically black colleges and uh, universities. And as you know, because I followed your coverage, uh, this was really a more than a four year effort Mm -hmm. uh, that began um, uh, right after, uh, of course, we began to have uh, issues and discussions with SACS about our accreditation with that agency. And over the next four year period, many people, uh, board members, business leaders, administrators, uh, faculty and students all came together to continue to support the college and to never lose faith that at the end of the day, we will be celebrating this very um, um, unique and, and treasured opportunity that we have with track. I want to thank, of course, Dr. Jones, who's providing outstanding leadership, her administration at this point in time. But there were difficult days, but we never lost faith. There were some distressing and disappointing moments in this process, but we never lost faith. Believing in Payne College, believing in its history and its heritage, and knowing that at the end of the day, we would be successful. There were many business leaders who continued to support the college, even though our accreditation was threatened uh, with SAC. Uh, never lost faith in the college, continued to contribute money, and those students who maintained enrollment in the college never lost faith. And so the one word, and I've repeated it multiple times, the most important thing was that there were board members, 
administrators, faculty members, students, alumni, and friends who throughout this ordeal never lost faith in Payne College. And ultimately, that is why we were able to succeed and gain full accreditation with track. And then Dr. Martin, from, a, from an academic affairs perspective, how valuable is that, that accreditation and that membership in the effort to, to build out programs, uh, to attract grant dollars uh, for research and development, um, even from the perspective of, of uh, getting, in, getting in stronger faculty, recruiting strong students, just from an academic affairs perspective, how much does that accreditation mean to you guys? Well, again, I would also like to offer my thanks for you giving us this opportunity. But if you had asked that as a multiple choice question on a test, I would have to have said all of the above. <laughs> uh, and that's simply because that is true. Uh, just with the uh, achievement of gaining uh, tracks, accreditation, yes, it has opened up the opportunity for new programs, yes. It does allow us to go for uh, grants that we may not have qualified because we were not accredited. Yes, it does allow us to get into schools now because we are able to say we are accredited so we can now uh, recruit our students. Yes, it does send a message to uh, all of our clientele that Payne College is able to meet the same criteria that any other institution is required to meet and that our accountability has been uh, more than confirmed as, as we have gone through completing this tracks uh, accreditation. Let's talk about some of those opportunities now because you guys are part of a consortium uh, that, that, that is creating pipeline or professional development pipelines for some of your students and graduates. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, yes, we are. In fact, uh, there's a consortium with Tennessee State and uh, Meharry, as you have uh, mentioned in one of your earlier uh, broadcasts, and Payne College is a member of that. Uh, and that program is geared toward allowing students to, to do a uh, two plus two, uh, basically as it relates to engineering. And it's also geared toward improving opportunities for females. Payne is the only institution I think that's outside of Tennessee that's a part of that. And our president uh, recently signed an MOU that establishes us as a full member of that consortium. And that program is being led by uh, Dr. Raul Peters and Dr. Anna Gay Nelson here at uh, Payne College. And even, and even with all the, the the joy and celebration about accreditation is still the business of the college is moving forward. As we can see this week, uh, there was an announcement, Madam President, about the new partnership or uh, an extension of the existing partnership with Augusta National Golf Club, uh, where there will be an endowed scholarship for students and students. Can you talk a little bit about that partnership and how it is, has worked over the years and blossomed to this new expansion um, into not only just into student support, but also athletic support as well? Exactly. We are delighted about that. For several years, as you suggested, the Augusta National Golf Club has provided support to Payne College roughly for about 20 or so years. But we are expanding that partnership with the Augusta National. And as it was announced on Monday from the Augusta National Golf Course, the golf course is the Augusta National is establishing a scholarship to honor Lee Elder, who was the first black to play in the Masters Golf Tournament. And what happens with that is that there will be an endowed scholarship and a scholarship will go to a male and a female golfer. And they will also establish a women's golf team here at Payne College. So students will have the opportunity once things are up and running to come here and play golf in one of the biggest golf cities in the world, and at the same time, earn a degree from Payne College, having received a quality education. Do you think, do, do you foresee that, that that partnership, because golf is one of those, those sports and those industries that even in the midst of a pandemic, 
has continued to do fairly well in terms of finance and, and being able to play and fans somewhat being able to access some of the tournaments. It, do you see an expansion of that uh, for pain such that not, maybe not that it becomes, you know, intrinsically golf because pain is a strong liberal arts institution, but as Augusta national is a major corporate partner in the area, do you think that there are opportunities where that expands maybe around golf or maybe around sports, sports and hospitality management or other things? How do you kind of see that that relationship broadening even more? Well, I think the doors are open for all sorts of opportunities. I think it will encourage students who want to play golf, certainly on the women's side and on the men's side as well, because they will be, as I said, in the best golf city in the world. And I think that will be an attraction for students here. And hopefully our partnership will include members or um, staff persons from the Augusta National who can interact with our students. Again, we're still working out some of the details of that, but I think it's gonna be very exciting for us and for students who want to come here. Chairman Thurman, you, you mentioned faith a lot of times in your remarks. Um, and obviously that's something that is shared across the pain community and it's shared within a corporate community as they're continuing to support the institution. From a, what do you think, or what do you see in terms of an executive position that pain's new potential is? Um, because there was, pain has always been great. Pain has been around for more than a hundred years. Pain has always offered a quality education. Um, and even in the midst of how trends are changing in higher education, this seems to give a renewal for what is possible for pain. How do you see that, that, that uh, I guess, kind of fortifying in the next five to 10 years in terms of what you think pain will be able to do in terms of academics and enrollment and corporate engagement and those things? Well, blessings are sometimes disguised in terms of conflict and turmoil. And this accreditation fight that we've been engaged in including the COVID-19 pandemic, has fueled a desire among the board and hopefully, I believe, the entire Payne College family to reassess and re-envision the future. Uh, we see this as an opportunity to rethink the mission, uh, the goals and objectives of the college, while we continue to stand fast on the foundation that has been built over the last 138 years. And there is a connection. I wanna go back to something Dr. Jones said. You know, I was a senior at Payne College in 1975 when Lee Elder literally integrated the Masters Tournament in Augusta. And uh, I was there and we have to remember Dr. Julius S. Scott, who was a mentor and a friend, the late Dr. Julius S. Scott. The reason we have this relationship really is when Lee Elder was refused uh, to be seated in a restaurant, Dr. Scott opened up the campus to Lee Elder and provided food and support and encouragement and held a reception on campus for Lee Elder. I remember attending that reception as a senior at Payne College. And it's Mr. Elder remembered that kindness that was extended by this college and by the late Dr. Scott which laid the foundation for what occurred uh, last week at the Augusta National. And that is why his historically black colleges and universities are so important. You know, over the decades and over the centuries, uh, we've never lost faith. And I use that term again, uh, in the college and in what it stands for, and more importantly, the contribution that it will make going forward. This is an amazing moment to have lived through from 1975 when Dr. Scott hosted this, this, this amazing athlete on our campus to, to this week when he paid back or at least attempted to address that bit of kindness by serve, reaching out and investing back in this institution. It's an amazing moment to have lived through it and witnessed it as a student and now as chair of the Board of Trustees. Our best days are yet to come. The future is bright for paying college. And one thing about it, when you go through the tough times, you learn things. And as a board member, and I can speak for the board, 
we are refocused in terms of what our roles and responsibilities are. We almost lost Payne College, literally. Let's just be clear. And it was a distressing, painful moment. But we continued to work together. We continued to believe and, and to strategize and to make difficult decisions that allowed us to be on this call with you today uh, celebrating our successes. And I think it can be instructive for other institutions. Pain is not the only one who faced with financial challenges. What we want to do is to be a beacon of hope and hopefully inspiration for other institutions to show them that no matter how difficult the path might be, that you can, if you're willing to make the sacrifices, overcome the challenge. That's a wonderful way to put it. It actually leads into my final question for all three of y'all. I mean, with, with so much hard work over such a long and consistent period, does it does it feel like you can just take a breath and say, <laughs> finally? Or do you feel like, okay, that's done, time to go do something else? Like, what what is the feeling like? Because I, I think that people don't get how difficult that is to pour over hundreds and hundreds of pages of accreditation stuff and have these meetings and have these strategy sessions, it's grueling. And so to have reached your goal, does it feel like, okay, it's Thanksgiving, we about to take off for a few days? Or is it like, no, we got we got a lot more stuff to do. We are just getting started. How does that, what does that feel like? Well, what I've told the team is that we can take a breath for just a minute at most a day, but the real work is yet to come. Mm -hmm. We have much more to do. And I truly believe that having received accreditation from TRATS will help us in the work that's to come. So we just breathe for a minute, pick up the mantle and keep going. Because as um, Chair Thurman has said, our best days are ahead, but we have to make that so. It won't just happen on its own. So there's still a lot of work to do. And yes, we've, uh, we've learned how to work hard we've learned that there's always uh, uh, morning is going to come, but night will come after that. And we keep looking forward to all of the mornings because there are brighter days ahead for Payne College. We have to place it back on the sound footing that it has always enjoyed so that we will not have to leave these challenges to those who come behind us. Mm. And Chairman, we give you the last word. <laughs> you know, I, for the first time in over four years, I had a peaceful night's rest. <laughs> uh, the morning, the day after the announcement. Uh, and I had said to our friends and classmates that I, I, was, I just could not accept losing pain college in, in my lifetime. And so that was a moment of rest, but now we have to institutionalize the lessons learned. Uh, and, I, and I'm not, I'm speaking about pain, but I'm speaking about all of our historical black institutions. Mm -hmm. You know, even the accreditors said, y'all have, a, you all have a very strong academic program. Our academics were never in question. Right. It was about the, the finances. And one of my lesson is that our challenges was never, it wasn't that we didn't have enough money, we just didn't have, we didn't manage the, the resources that we did have in a proper way. That will change. And we have to institutionalize that. And we have to maintain ourselves as an enrollment driven institution. I.e. budgets have to be developed based on real enrollment uh, uh, numbers. But we got a great team in place, uh, have a tremendous amount of faith in Dr. John and Dr. Martin and others in the administration. You learn from your mistakes, you don't dwell on them, and you always look to the hills, because that's the win. That's the win. The blessings flow. And that's who we are. And Payne College has existed for 138 years, and we're not going anywhere. No time soon. <laughs> I, I got to say, it, it's remarkable, man. I, I think uh, any time that we can put voice and face to a, a significant recovery effort, um, we should try to do that because there is an indomitable spirit uh, in Augusta, Georgia. 
Um, you guys have come through a great deal uh, with a great deal of grace. Um, and even when folks were tough on you, including me, unfairly, sometimes including me, um, you guys kept you guys kept at the wheel. Um, and I think you guys are truly, truly, truly a model uh, for the HBC community. So I, I am greatly appreciative uh, of the time you've made today and looking forward to, to having you back on to talk about uh, all of the tremendous things that are yet to come. Thank you all so much. And again, we'd like to thank you, Mr. Carter, for having us today to talk about Payne College and our successes. And thank you for what you have done for Payne College and all HBCUs.